Welcome back to The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. It's time for us to take you through the pages. We call it Off the Press, and we have Chris Mwandu, who's in standby. He joins the conversation in no time. Good morning, Chris. It's good to have you join us this morning on The Papers. Good morning, wonderful people. I hope you had a nice night. Yes. I hope you, hope you have power supply. You have lights where you are. Okay, how are you charging your phone? <laughs> <laughs> right, right now, anybody who touches my power bank will have a fight with me. <laughs> they, will, they will with me. It's nice to be here this morning. Yes, we thank God. We thank All right, God. so um, it's good to have you join us for the paper review. We'll start off with the leadership, as always, uh, looking at the banner caption. Now, the bold caption says, States crumbling under security. Economic crisis, governors won. That's a bold caption. Underneath, you have several riders. It says, Lament VAT, Stamp Duty Administration, Politics Around Parry Club Refund. Skewed federal system has eroded state identities, Akira Dolo. Uh, one would be thinking that, you know, state governors would be agitating if the solution will be restructuring, if the solution is that states should be able to control their resources and the uh, architecture in the states. That's what they should be lobbying for. Uh, but it feels like they're more concerned about, you know, the handouts and how all of this really happens. Away from that, you have the NLC backs ASU strike as students consider vocational skills. Very important. Aviation fuel scarcity. We have only three days to shut down operations, which will mean that Nigerians would probably have to um, I mean, those who have the means and can afford uh, to, or to travel by uh, the air, I mean, using the airways, would probably would have to go through the roads if that really happens. Away from that, you also find APC 6 vacation of court order stopping convention. The convention for the APC is slated uh, for the 26th of March. But there's a lot of rancor uh, going on in the APC at this point. Consumers to pay more for manufactured goods. Uh, that's also another one. And just before we move away from the leadership, you have the federal government, CBN, to finance 75,600 NPAR beneficiaries. We're still here. 2023, Inugu West PDP, Ikurin Madu, uh, cheats Ikurin Madu over zoning denial. About Kiari's wife slums as NDLEA oppose bill for husband and that's it on the leadership this morning let's move on from the leadership to look at the headlines on the front page of the guardian newspaper the big one cbn in fresh plan to wean banks off cash of cash handling risks and costs cbn in fresh plan to wean banks off cash handling risks and costs with the following riders moves to license shared cash hub operators uh, considers areas with large banking activities to accommodate individuals, corporate entities with huge cash needs and restricted to transaction not below 500,000 naira. The editorial on uh, in the paper, the Guardian newspaper this morning, is on the Russia-Ukraine war, uh, titled Russia-Ukraine war and biting realities in Nigeria. Shall we make for an interesting read. More from the paper. Amid costly diesel, grid collapses 24 hours after Jenko's warning. Amid costly diesel, grid collapses 24 hours after Jenko's warning. Outrageous ASU extends strike by two months. PDP, not your personal property, Obasaki hits back at Wiki. Of course, um, Wiki also replied him, uh, and it's been back and forth between the two as well, bed mates. Abba Carey's wife slumps in court and the LEA demands husband, remands husband, six others. Chaos at airports as fuel scarcity disrupts operations and Nigeria may lose 170,000 barrels per day as Shell and Najib declare force majeure. These are the headlines on the front page of The Guardian. Well, let's, let's take a look at the Punch newspaper this morning and uh, the bold caption for the Punch says, Blackout as national greed collapses. Federal government summons emergency meeting. That's it. Uh, underneath, discourse alerts power consumers as 19 power plants record zero output. 
Federal government, TCN, Jens Coles, NNPC oil firms, others hold marathon session. Major firms, public institutions suspend services as blackout lingers. Uh, this is a lot, you know, to deal with at this point in time, dealing with fuel scarcity, hiking, you know, the price or, you know, fair transportation fare. And uh, now you have to grapple with, you know, the blackout. We K or Basiki continue verbal war, governor's alleged betrayal, unguarded comments. And also you have reps NNPC intervene as flight cancellation leaves passengers stranded. Federal government may spend 83% of revenue on interest in 2022, says the International Monetary Fund, the IMF. And underneath, you find a, a picture representing, um, you know, what happened yesterday. Confusion as Kiari's wife slums in court, suspended DCP remanded. And 12 days to convention, APC holds forms... Governors and divided. I, I like to take that again. 12 days to convention. APC holds forms. Governors divided. And uh, inquest, you have Sylvester died of pneumonia leading to a disease, says the doctor. Rumored planned please strike fake, mischievous. That's what the force headquarters is quoted to say. And you still have uh, underneath, there are several interesting headlines, but we'll just take one or two and move away for the want of time. As to extend strike to May, parents beg federal government, uh, parents beg and federal government demands met. Nigeria reports 1,060 polio cases, variant hits 29 states and the FCT. Uh, these are some of the headlines. All right, we'll uh, berth with the Daily Independent uh, with the following headlines on its on its front page, uh, the banner caption there, with a kicker. ASU strike extension, and the headline: Stakeholders blame federal government, urge quick resolution of impasse. Stakeholders blame federal government, urge quick resolution of impasse, and the following writers still the front page of the Daily Independent say government needs to be proactive to end strike. Worried over students' elongated programs, education standard, and most demands raised by academic union, union have been met, says federal government. More from the Daily Independent, fuel scarcity, airlines threaten to shut down in three days. Fuel scarcity, airlines threaten to shut down in three days. And uh, Bielsa Blast cuts oil export by 25,000 barrels per day as ENI declares force majeure. INEC asks APC, PDP, to obey court orders, electoral guidelines. Well, one is which uh, uh, court orders they're talking about. If Umahi uh, belongs to that category, you can read uh, the details of that on page 7 of the Daily Independent. Governors, state, attorneys general, brainstorm on criminal justice, VAT, and bail plea. Abba Kiari knows fate, March 28, as wife slumps in court. These are the details or the headlines, rather, on the front page of the Daily Independent. Let's turn attention now um, to Chris Kende Wando, our guest analyst on Off the Press this morning. Mr. Wandu, the airlines in Nigeria have told us that the unthinkable can happen, and that being that no airline will be flying from any of the airports within the country. That is something you could never have imagined. Your thoughts on this? Yes, um, something never imagined, but um, very, very avoidable. Um, as of this morning, there's a, there have been an update on that news. Uh, as of yesterday, um, the chairman of uh, AP said that um, they practically have um, just three days um, aviation fuel before uh, shutting down. Um, the news coming in this morning is that uh, the NNPC, which is the sole importer of um, Jet A1, have come up to say that they will try to supply the airlines with Jet A1 for three days more um, at the rate of 500 Naira. Um, Presently, it's going for about 700 Naira, and that is where the problem is. And the airlines have looked at it from that point that, irrespective of whatever you do, that is not profitable. And instead of them to start risking the lives of Nigeria, it's better to that they just shut down on, uh, until something is. And I, I watched the uh, DG of NCAA 
last weekend in one of the national TV stations, who also raised this concern that in the next few days, if nothing is done, that they will practically shut down the uh, um, the airspace uh, from the airlines because when you start having this problem, then we are going back to days of Bellevue crash, days of EAS crash, days of Dana crash, and the other crashes that happened in the past because most of the airlines were caught in corner. So that is where we find ourselves. But as I said, that could have been solved because as we have it presently, it is only the NMPC that imports Jet A1. I was also watching the, um, I also listened and watched the, uh, is it the president of the chairman of the um, uh, Oil Marketers Association, who was saying that the last time they had the opportunity of importing Jet A1 was about um, four or five years ago. And what is happening is that licenses are being given to people that are not involved involved in the aviation industry, you know the way we roll in Nigeria. And that in itself, what they just do is, uh, they don't have anything, they don't have any stake in the, in the aviation industry. They probably sell those uh, uh, licenses or sell those uh, allocations to people. Then you continue to have little men meddling in it as of now that is going for about 700 now. And um, that doesn't, and it was asked the question, why is that not affecting, what is happening to the international airlines that are coming to Nigeria? And he said that they have a contract with the international airlines to sell at uh, 400 naira. And as it were presently, that they are losing because they are buying at 600 and even some of them are buying middlemen for 600 and supplying to. So um, that is a contract they have with the international airlines. But I don't know what is going to happen. I also hear that um, that um, the NNPC is thinking of, um, NNPC and the minister is thinking of the possibility of now uh, adhering to the request of the airline operators to import this jet A1. Kofi, the, what we should know is that most people don't understand that jet A1 is not just only for um, uh, for airlines or for planes. People are, it's part of those kerosene you use at home. You can use jet A1 as kerosene in the house for local consumption for your or for your uh, consumption, but you cannot use kerosene because that was what I understand. I've read um, vastly about this. You can use jet A1 as kerosene in the domestic. So what we have now is that Nigerians are competing with the airlines for that product as domestic because we don't also have kerosene in the country. So it's becoming a very very terrible situation. That uh, I hope that something we give. And the authorities uh, in question will be able to do something about it. But that is Nigeria. We don't have lights. We don't have petrol uh, to move around now the aviation. What it means that we have been totally shut down. And good enough, Kofi, I will advise you, I will advise Messi, if Messi doesn't have to ride a bicycle, she should go and buy a bicycle because it will come to a point that all we all resort to now is <laughs> using bicycle to move around. And know, it's, it, it's, it's quite an unfortunate situation. And of course, the... Um, House of Representatives uh, brokering uh, something between the NNPC and the oil marketers, and like you said, uh, they are saying they can they can provide at 500 now for the next three days. So, which means six days. So, after that, what happens? What happens after that? And it's so sad to hear you say that you know they have a contract with the uh, foreign airline to supply at 400 naira what happened to pricing in dollars so anytime the thing goes up you can still make your money it's quite unfortunate and really sad um like you said the nation is shut down really um is it the power sector shut down for the business people how are they going to buy the the the, the highly priced diesel you know they spending between you know huge amounts of money let's not even go there so it, it is at that times and before before messi comes in with the next headline what are your thoughts on, on Mr. President hopping on the plane and, and you know, jetting out of the country when Nigerians were in the middle of a gripping you know, fuel scarcity situation that affected them in very, very terrible ways? I've always been one of those that believe that we've always been on autopilot. I'm, I'm using the aviation uh, term again. I, I know that yourself and Messi understand what I mean by that. When you're in a plane, you know, when a plane is like, like you are flying from here to the United States, it gets to a point that where the pilots get tired, and although they have co-pilot and reserve, but they put it, there's a level at which they apply, they just put it on autopilot that the pilot doesn't have to get himself engaged in the activities of piloting the plane, and a plane can move for hours uh, without anybody, and that is what we find ourselves. Uh, the president, who's supposed to, are you talking of, you are talking of only the economy, you are talking of petroleum, you are talking of aviation, you are talking of, what of the level of insecurity? Um, is like 
um, the country is being left for us. Although the president said, yes, the vice president is in, in charge, but he did not transmit power to the vice president because there's a limit to what the, the It's just like my local palace where he said, if you want to give me go, to give me with the rope. No, give me rope. No, give me good. Don't go rope. If you understand what I mean, yeah, yeah. so that is what is happening. So there are certain decisions that the vice president might not be able to take without the president. So we are the fate of. Um, I just pray that um, we'll be able to survive uh, the two weeks or three weeks. He say will be the way when it comes back. Then uh, we start the best. Even at that, you see that even in, in terms of politics, all of them are moving now to uh, to London. All of them, the graduates are now moving to London, even to meet the president. On the issue of APC convention coming up, hmm. well, I don't know what. We, I, I don't we'll, know what. Will we all maybe we all have to start going to London to charge our phones because uh, it's you, like that's where. Can the, you even uh, afford, can you even <laughs> afford it? Can you even afford it? <laughs> you know, you know when Timaya, you know they will solve by Timaya now, where he say you wake up, you go to the US and uh, London to charge his phone and come back the next moment and rest of it. Maybe that's what we need to do. Because even the fuel to rust generator in the house, we don't have it. So we, as we are talking, I've not had lights for some days now. And so can, I'm happy about it. Let's, let's, let's just, you know, look at it now. And it's a good thing that you have mentioned that it's on the Punch newspaper. It talks about the, uh, the blackout as the national grid collapses. And, you know, according to reports, this would be the second time uh, for 2022. Now, the federal government has actually summoned an emergency meeting and we're asking, as always, uh, of what use will this meeting be? Would he solve any problem? Because we have very technical issues that needs to be addressed. Will an emergency meeting fix it? Maybe that would happen. But your thoughts, um, how did we get to this point? How, what do we need to do to get out of it? If I have the magic ones, I would have told you what to do, what we do, uh, Messi, but I, I don't think I have, just like you, <laughs> I don't think you have as well. We are talking of collapse, second collapse in, um, in this year. I will tell you that we've had over 20 or 30 um, total collapse since 2015, and they have been meeting and nothing has been done about it. The one in Ikorodu collapsed, the one in, they, all over, they collapsed. Messi, the most annoying part of it is that we are not even transmitting enough. We are hovering between 4,000 and 3,000, which is, which is, we can never get it. A country like, like South Africa is about 30,000. They are on about 30,000. We are the most populous country in the whole of Africa. We cannot generate, we generate, but we cannot be able to transmit up to 5,000. Now everything could last. Why would it collapse? Because when the body, it, it, it's just simple mathematically, this thing. If you have a lot of body on that, on, 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 on the Jane Coast, then it will, the, the, the power stations will collapse. We've said that, let us look for alternative. The Mambila has been there for years, and I, I, I think it's hydro. And we believe, this, some people believe that we'll be able to put up that of Mambila, there's a possibility that we will, we will have enough to put into the national grid. We are not doing that. What we're doing is just managing what we have. At the end of it, all, even if they do the magic, you have the emergency meeting today, and they bring it, I can tell you that in the next few days again, it will collapse again. We are not doing what we are supposed to do. We are not building more. We are looking at the process. That was a time, you remember, Messi, that was a time that we had a minister, uh, I can't remember his name now. He, uh, he was a former uh, vice chancellor of the University of Nigeria, Soka. I can't remember his name now, one pro. He had what he said, and it's laughable. He said there are witches and wizards in the power sector. And I don't know where the professor got his idea of witch and witch, wizard in our power sector. But that is, that is it. A country like Ghana, a country like Benin, a country like Togo, even Niger and Chad are having steady power supply. Do you know that we're also giving, we're, we're also transmitting power to some of these neighboring countries in, in West Africa? When we don't even have enough of our own. That was some time ago, it was probably that one of these West Africa countries was holding, owing us billions and billions. And I hope you remember that, that story. We cannot even, so what are we going to, the SMEs are practically, are practically dead. The industries are dying. The, the, the level of insecurity is on the high. People cannot find job. And you ask yourself, and I used to have this feeling that with all sorts of women, if some Nigerians, God forbid, find themselves in hell, and you know they say there's heaven, there's hell. Some people won't feel it. Because already some of us are already in hell. Yes. So when you get there, you get there, it's like a, a, a relocation. They won't feel it. And that is the situation we find ourselves. And it's that bad. We don't even know who to complain to. The president we are supposed to talk, is he not the one in London? 
having a, having his metrics and chilling out and the rest of them. I leave the rest of them. If he comes back, he definitely doesn't light doesn't affect him. I'm sure he has light to four hours. The ministers have light to four hours. Legislators have light to four hours because they can run their generator for four hours. But you and I, the poor people on the street, we cannot be able to afford light. Then we have to look, we look for a way of charging our phone, just our phone to communicate. That is phone no. Phone no. I'm not talking about vehicle and all that. Uh, this thing. And you can need to ask yourself, how do you, the question you ask, which I like is, which I'm looking forward to somebody to ask, is, how do we get here? And th I think that is the question we should be asking now. In, what, in any of the uh, uh, presentation, Mercy, Kofi, the question you should be asking everybody is, how do we get there? And when you have all these people, people coming to your stations, ask them the question, how do we get there? Maybe they'll give us the answer. Of course, CK and Chris can even wonder. I don't think I have that sort of that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, uh, um, Chris Kenawando. Let, let, let's just stick with the with the crisis in you know in the different sectors of the economy, um, but but with aviation, um, there's a picture someone some people are painting and saying that uh, one of the reasons why the House of Reps has rushed, you know, in a quote the, in their words to wade into this aviation sector crisis to ensure that at least the airlines can get the fuel to power their jets to fly for the next uh, six days is because this also affects them. I mean, not all of them will have, and the elites in the country, let's put it that way, will be able to afford a private jet um, to travel all around. Even the mayor himself of Kano, um, the revered mayor, all respect to him, uh, had to use the airpiece. Um, do, you, do, you, do you go with that school of thought, that the reason they rushed to uh, you know, crush the price of the Jet A1 to 500 naira per liter, even though Alan Uyama is saying that even without 500 naira, they'll be selling their tickets at 85,000 know, naira for a flight within the country. Do you feel that there's some sort of also um, a personal interest for, for the elites, especially the, those in the National Assembly, looking to this and quickly resolving it? And not this is not as fast as they acted, or this is slower than they acted with the um, with the petrol that you and I use on a daily basis. But that's just a contention. Okay. If they fly out with their village people fly out, with their constituency fly out, with those living in their houses fly out, with their father and mother fly out, with their sisters fly out, it's just a contention as far as I'm concerned. What we are looking, what we are doing is postponing what I call the evil day. And the evil day, if we don't take proactive measure, the evil day will go. Even countries in war, even countries in war are having aviation well, they are having electricity. In Ukraine, with all the bombing, electricity, <laughs> coffee, electricity in Ukraine, no? so you know, you know that one. With all the bombings, all these are our students coming in from um, Ukraine, as a, with all the bomb, they say they'll be having electricity. They'll be charging their phone, they'll be making calls. We, that is not a situation of war. What other situation is worse than this? Is this not more than war? This is a war. It's a war situation. What are we talking about? Okay. So, um, so I, I, I just believe that, uh, you know, in Nigeria, we joke a lot. We just find, try to find. We are, we are the happiest people on earth. Are you, are you sure we don't have our own war? It's just that it's not a civil war. But anyway. Let, let, I said this, <laughs> no, listen to me. I said this is war. Hear what I said. I said this is war, that we're in war situation. Even worse war situation than those in Ukraine. The only thing we are seeing that, that nobody is bumping us. But we have been bombed physically, mentally, even spiritually, we have been bombed. And we are so helpless that we have not. You and I cannot go, go anywhere so, now. But Chris. You go and and nobody will give you visa. Uh, the, the, the truth yes. is, uh, yes, of course, uh, the fact that we don't have the conventional war being uh, experienced in Nigeria where you have people shootings and all of that doesn't necessarily mean that, uh, you know, war does not happen. So war is not only when you have uh, exchanging bullets and what have you. This is also, you know, a war situation as well. It and is. that's because it of is. some structural uh, decadence and de deficiency in the system. And if we have to address the issues, we have to go to the root of it. We have to address it from the root. But most times, it feels like we are uh, looking at the symptom. Uh, you look at the educational sector as shutting down or is on shutdown. And then you look at the aviation sector. It you know, might just be going down. Everything seems to be going down. Just maybe the doctors also might just uh, wake up at this point again and uh, I'm back on the strike or something. And then we'll just have to, you know, all be grounded. But we will continue to pray as we do always in this country. And one day we're hoping that we would decide not to just pray, but do the work. Mercy, that has always been our problem. We pray. We pray. We are the most prayerful nation on earth. Even the Vatican, where 
Christianity, where I have headquarters. <laughs> Americans don't pay as much as we pay. Those in UK, those in China, if you are talking of prayer, go to wait. If you are talking of prayer, Chinese people don't pray. But you see how progressive they are. This, the problem is that we have been so boxed to a corner that we believe that prayer can suffer. Even the Bible says, help them help those that help themselves. Oh, it's not that's in the Bible. No, that, that's pray. not in the Bible. <laughs> the fact is that we have to do the needful. We have to do the... We, every Sunday, it, it it's not only Sunday. Mercy, mm -hmm. it has gotten to a point where Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we are going on VG. What, who, 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 who do I help? Uh, that's a problem. But, but Chris... So no problem. <laughs> But Chris, that's not in the Bible. It's just a popular saying. Uh, there's no address of that. Okay, there's no chapter of uh, that. And if you know the Bible, add it to the one that is there. <laughs> Let us add it to this. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, Chris Kedewadu, um, whilst, whilst um, Nigerians are grappling with these issues and expecting the politicians to prefer solutions, um, they seem to be fighting themselves and you know, still focusing on the political matters. Uh, yes, Owike and Godwin Obaski became bedfellows after Gordon Obaski left the APC to the PDP. And he, of course, relied on Yeso Wiki's endorsement and support to be given the umbrella and uh, to become the flag bearer of a, um, the PDP in the governorship election, which he went on to win. Wiki also supported him in terms of campaigning. He was there even uh, on the day of election, if I'm not mistaken. But, but um, both men have, have begun exchanging words. Wiki fired his first salvo when he uh, had some pretty um, uncharitable, undiplomatic words for uh, Philip Shoaibu, who is the deputy governor of Edo State. And that led the governor of Edo State to put up a press statement, uh, which is so, the likes of which you hardly see um, addressing Wiki and telling him what to do. You know, it, wa it was really, really, really um, a, a strong one from Obaski. Um, they've been back and forth. And the headline on the front page of uh, the Punch newspaper this morning is uh, Wiki Obaski continue verbal war. Governor uh, governor's alleged betrayal on guarded comments. Uh, your thoughts on this? Kofi, um, yes, a week is, is a governor I have so much respect. But it seems that that man is becoming a bully. And the earlier we tell people like Wiki, the earlier the better. The last time I checked, Wiki is not the owner of PDP. In fact, when PDP was formed, UK, UK has even come into the picture. It was from 1999 that he was appointed that the chairman of uh, Obiapo, then um, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, was Amechi brought him into cabinet and the rest of it. He was not part of those that popped it. So what is his problem? Why is he bullying everybody? And that's what we ask ourselves. Um, um, uh, I think we, we say something. We will we jump up and attack him. He is the one attacking Omani. He is the one that is attacking Obaseki. He is the one attacking. He is the national chairman of PDP. What is his problem? And that is what, let us. The problem we are having in this country is that we built, in, we try to as much to build individuals instead of institutions. I think we should call a spade a spade. We get to face his job as the governor of River State and leave other state governors alone to do their job. What is he, This is what is called Midisom Interlopa. What is his business with a, a do state? Is it the governor of a do state? Even if you help, let me tell you something. The fact that you help me does not mean that you should kill me. So we can should just stop all this. Let us even look at the issues that we have. Kofi, when Governor Tambua moved from APC to PDP, all the structure in Sokoto State was handed over to him by the PDP. When Matalawi moved from PDP to APC, all the structure of the APC in, um, uh, in, 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 in that state was added to him. When David Umani moved from PDP to APC, all the structure of APC was handed over to him. The same thing with um, uh, Governor of Cross River State, uh, Professor Ayade, and so many other things. That is how it worked. Well, Chris. Since we came, out to that, since we came in into, into PDP, we have not been given the necessary support to be able to move this party forward. And a governor, a deputy governor came to national television to say, ah, this is the problem we are having. We need the social. You jump, you jump up and just Chris, him. Chris, we have to let you go now. No, no, miss, just a second. Just a second. He was even calling him a mere deputy governor. Can you imagine deputy governor? Who you want to, who is with him? And I think it's high time we start. If we don't have, if we don't continue to look at issues on this basis, then we are going to run into. We, as I said, is the governor of River State, 
Okay, let me even put it to you. As a media person, as a communication person, he went to um, commission um, rules and the rest of it. Do you hear the name of that rule that was commissioned? Do you hear about the commissioning? No. What you are hearing now is the fact that he's talking about Uma, he's talking about this. That is not a, I think it's well, high time that well, we should we, just... We have to go. But Umahi, Umahi is claiming that, uh, yes, we can, of course, this is an allegation, has the judiciary in his armpit. Going by the words he's made, he's said about the Edo, the uh, Ebony State case. But we'll be watching the situation. You know, we have Cross River State, uh, they're saying Wiki hounded him out of the PDP. Uh, and now Edo State, uh, Obaski accusing Wiki of meddling in the party. We'll continue to watch the situation. Chris Kenny Umahi is uh, the tribalized Nigerian. Uh, Not the Umahi. I mean, I'm Chris Kenny Umahi. Chris Kenny Wandu. Sorry. You know how God may be speaking to me through you, to you through me. Miss, Chris. Miss, you can speak me. He has made me a governor. He's can <laughs> yes, so, but without the trouble of Umahi, Chris K. Wandu is a chartered mediator and conciliator and what we call a detribalized Nigerian. Thank you very much for your time. It's nice being with you this morning. Do have a wonderful day ahead. All right, that's the size of it for Off the Press. Uh, let's tell you what happened today in history and at 8 o'clock. We'll head straight to a major conversation. Please stay with us.